Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carriato. Welcome today. I'm out while it is cool somewhat in this heat wave that we've been enduring. And so as you join in, God is going to bring just the breath of His Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, the cool of the day for us to enjoy the strength of His Word of Truth. Amen. So as you join in from this on this hot day, you be ready to feel Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, Katie Higgle, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Ashley, thank you for joining in. And if you have not seen the prophecies that I put out about reward time, and I see other people, join, oh, Sherry, I think that's you, Sherry, and Suzanne, I don't have my glasses on, but go ahead. I think it's Liz. I can't tell, but thank y'all for joining in. And so, oh, there's Teresa Chapel. There's my spiritual daughter. Oh, I love you, Teresa. I put up your picture that you drove me yesterday. Oh, thank you. I love you all. God bless you. So awesome to have you on here. And as you join in, and I, I apologize because I can't see everybody's name, but thank y'all for joining in. And so if you have not seen, okay, the reward prophecy that God had me put up yesterday, I copied and pasted it to put it up again today. Thank you, Teresa, to put it up again today on a post. And so yesterday, y'all know that I usually do, I hear the Father saying on Fridays, well, yesterday, Holy Spirit stirred me up and told me to put, I hear the Father saying out. And four times in that post, he said, it is the time of reward. He was talking about reward four times and even said, it is the time of reward. And I'm telling you, saints, as we get closer to Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, on the festival calendars of the set appointed times of God, which on the civilian calendar, it is not in the Bible, but the civilian calendar of the Jewish calendar, they have Rosh Hashanah, the new year. And so I'm telling you, I am beyond expected. Hey, Kimberly, I am beyond expected knowing that God is going to do Ephesians 3.20 because it is a set time of reward. Well, after I did that prophecy yesterday morning, within just a few minutes, I get this email and the email on my Robin at GodsFirewall.com site says, Robin, it is reward time. And it was, I think, from Publix grocery store. We shop at Greenwise and Greenwise is also a Publix grocery store. Well, I was just like, that is crazy because God just had me post that it is the time of his reward. And I just kept feeling it this morning in relation to, oh, I thought someone was behind me. You know what? Someone is behind me. God's glory is our rear guard. That's what I was feeling. He goes before us and his glory is our rear guard. Amen. And so it just keeps coming up to me, saints. And so let me give you the legal aspect of this. And in the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, there is a lot of contract law. There is some criminal law to prove intent, mens rea. And there is also some wills, trust, and estates law. So God is really bringing in my law degree in that, unpacking the word in relation to a contract, wills, trust, and estates, and intent, and the power of intent. So watch this, this is so powerful. God kept telling me, and also the other day, as I put in my post today, I saw, I think I was scrolling through something in my memories or something, whatever it was, and it said 1166. And I was like, wow, or it must've been on my, a receipt. And I was like, wow. And that number just stayed in my heart. And I posted about when I've lived at different locations that had Eagle on the street name, the first Eagle place I lived was 1111 Eagle Drive. And God told me then in 2007, he said, Robin, that 1111 is the gift of prophecy in your members. And you're gonna walk in that anointing in a double portion. 
and five years or four years later, he had me start God's Bible School of the Prophets in 2011. It just hit me in 2011. And we had moved in that time to another city on Eagle Point Road. And so Eagle Drive was flat. It was the valley. <laughs> and I was molting. I said that was my molting time. And if you haven't seen my molting uh, post in relation to an eagle, I'm going to post that again today. So eagles melt in the valley. And that's when oil, this dark oil seeps out of their feathers, out of their body and that represents sin coming out of us and it covers them and it weighs them down and it keeps them from being able to fly they go crazy <laughs> talking about beat the heat and oh before i forget hey miss donna i love you before i forget i'm gonna bring in something about beat the heat again and also there have been comments on my youtube channel if y'all are not on my youtube channel you'll see comment a comment put up by jennifer as I mentioned yesterday in yesterday morning's video about this heat is doing something to all these drivers that are, some people that are driving this heat is just really making them just insane, do insane stuff. Okay, and so we need to pray, but you also need to watch your driving. And as my dad taught me as a young girl, my dad taught me as he was teaching me how to drive, he said, Robin, you have to be an offensive driver. And I said, okay, what does that mean, Dad? He said, you have to, oops, sorry, sorry. You have to expect that other people are not gonna do the right thing. And they might run into you, they're gonna pull out. And that's just the way he always taught me to drive. And so sometimes when Rich is driving, you know, I just feel it, I sense it. And I'll go, Rich, this person's about to pull out in front of you, just watch out. And sure enough, they do that. And you really need to be an offensive driver right now so that you kind of anticipate that people might do things, okay? In order that you are more circumspect and conservative in your driving so that you don't get in accidents with all these crazy people that are driving right now, okay? And so if you've not seen Jennifer's comment on my YouTube channel, the horrible wrecks that people she knows of where they were in a head-on collision just a couple of weeks ago and the mother and daughter passed and another and other accident as well and other people are getting in accidents yesterday samantha got in an accident she's a friend of mine and i'm just in a log truck t-boned her and that's what i was trying to explain yesterday morning happened with me this big huge big truck this woman that was wanting to get out of a parking lot and saw me turning in as I'm turning in, she's trying to T-bone me. And I'm like, what? I'm telling you, saints, I don't know what this heat is doing. And as Jennifer mentioned, it's spiritual too, and I totally agree with that. But you know what? When the heat turns up, also the carnal nature or the sin, the gunk, the black oil, like the eagle will seep out that the eagle in that time feels like it's losing its mind and it starts beating its beak and it starts getting its talons and clawing them to a nub. Talk about feeling insane. And let me tell you what, Eagle Drive was my valley, my molting season. But once you endure the molting season and not many eagles make it out, but those who make it out go back to other eagles that are in that valley and they drop the meat because they know that address. They've been there done that, got that, got the t-shirt, gotten out of the valley, and been lifted up, Isaiah 40, 31, woo, on the wings of eagles, which means anointing, and they're going higher promotion, amen, promotion comes from the Lord, and so on Eagle Drive in 2011, I started God's Bible School of Prophets, there's that 11, so the numbers 1166 stood out, as I mentioned in my post this morning, and 66 always represents Isaiah 66, which I've taught in great measure in the year three of God's Bible School of the Prophets that started 2013 into 2014. And I did it May 2014, so Isaiah 66, unpacking the ancient Hebrew Olifet, doing a commentary. Hey, Deborah Faulkner, I love you. 
and showing you that Isaiah 66 is the time of Pentecost. It is the foreshadowing of Pentecost and the holy nation that is born in a day. Oh my goodness. God can do things swiftly and make it come, boom, hey Janice, in a day, in less than a day. He can just, boom, less than a millisecond. He is outside of time, woo, the kingdom of heaven. Oh, let me get to my point. And so I just made mention that 66 makes me think of Pentecost, but it also makes me think of the six stone vessels in John 2, which represent man, the number of man, and how Jesus said, fill it with water, and then Jesus showed up with the kingdom of heaven. Woo! And I explained that through physics and mathematics in a theoretical equation, it's powerful, from 2014, and I'm bringing it into this book in chapter four, the fourth dimension, to show you what happens in the invisible realm is heaven comes down on your members and it manifests what was always meant to be in the earth for you to walk in the hope that God has for your life. So this is where we are today. I'm telling you saints. So let me bring in my law degree and you already know this, but you know what? <coughs> you get to hear me talk about it today for the umpteenth time. And so, when you go to court, if you get to court, okay, you first of all have to cross the hurdle of standing, which means you have the right to be in a court and you have the right to a decision. You don't want to be in the court on the other side where you're dragged into court. So I'm talking about coming to the court and you have standing to have a decision for you. So let's look at tort law in relation to a decision for you, for you to get what is due you, okay? And so when we're looking at God's reward time, his acceptable year of the Lord, and I've been posting that for months, he keeps saying, Robin, this is the time of the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of his favor. He said, uh, tell my people to be expectant, to be ready, to be willing to receive and to enter in into it. And that's what the enemy's trying to hinder you from doing is perceiving it and entering it. So watch what you speak out of your mouth because you have whatever you speak. Whatever comes out of your mouth, you're going to have the fruits of your lips, the fruits of your words. And so we want to be speaking the word. We want to be speaking the word such as Hebrews 11:6, that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That is this time. This is the reward time. I'm telling you, saints, as we get ready to enter into Yom Teruah, which is next month on my birthday. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it falls on my birthday. Sometimes <coughs> the other feasts fall on my birthday. Day of Atonement did two years ago or last year. So we are at the time of the feast, and Yom Teruah kicks it off for the fall feast. And I'm telling you, saints, it is reward time. So a decision for you. The judge sees the evidence, and that evidence for us is Christ Jesus. It is mercy, and it is John 15, 8, the fruits of righteousness that glorify the Father. As those fruits of righteousness, or we are John 15, 2, pruned, because we're bearing good fruit, and we're pruned in order to bear greater fruit. That's where we've been, sifted, pruned, which I go into extensively in Mindfulness, Mind of Christ, explaining deliverance and explaining the printing process at the G-protein coupled receptor level, which is responsible for your behavior and your perception. And so we've been in that pruning process massively leading up to Yom Teruah, and we are about to get a decision for us according to the righteousness of Christ Jesus in us, according to John 15, 8, as we present, present fruits of righteousness that glorify the Father, where he, Matthew 24, sees that we are a faithful watchman watching for the Lord's return and that we are giving out 
the supply according to the need from the storehouse of his provision given to us in our gifts, in our talents, in order to help others out as we are living this journey on earth, walking it out in fear and in trembling, working out our salvation. And in that place, he's going to see that we're faithful. And then he's putting us in charge over all of his possessions. So there's going to be an enlargement like Jabez, where God is enlarging your territory. He's blessing you indeed, as in Isaiah 54 and Isaiah 54, as well as Isaiah 61 are in chapter 4 of the fourth dimension. And Isaiah 54, where you have felt the reproach of the enemy through that pruning, sifting, now you're going to see the enlargement where he's lengthening your cords, strengthening your stakes, and he is causing the curtains of your habitation to be enlarged. That's what you're going to see right now. Oh my goodness. All I can tell you is just like that, the woman that felt like a widow and reproached and forsaken, and suddenly she's visited by God. And he says, your master is your husband and more are going to be your spiritual children. And it's amazing that my spiritual daughter came on here today, Teresa Chapel. It's just confirmation. And I'm telling you, saints, we are at that time of enlargement and it is reward time. Be expectant, continue to walk humbly, continue to be circumspect, continue to guard your heart and your mind. And so we're going to end with part two, a beat the heat like I did yesterday. And today I'm going to do my favorite thing. Woo! Barbecue. For those of y'all who know me, know that when the devil makes me mad enough, when he's messed with me or my family or my friends or the people that God's given me to watch over in our ministry, when he does it enough, I get to the barbecue time. And I've said for years, it is time for a barbecue. And people say, where's that in scripture? Oh, it is in Psalm 74, 13 and 14. God cuts the heads of the dragon and he cuts and slices up the dragon in the wilderness, Leviathan, and he feeds them to the creatures in the wilderness. That's the barbecue verse. Well, guess what my favorite barbecue sauce is? Sweet heat. Oh yeah. Let me tell you what, when you beat the heat and you remain sweet, <laughs> it tastes good. The enemy is sliced and diced and he is done away with. So let me tell you what, saints, when I get that sweet heat barbecue sauce on some ribs, on some pulled pork sandwich, ain't nothing better than some hot and spicy and sweet barbecue sauce. Let me tell you what that's going to make your hot time, your heat time, a uh, first Peter one, six and seven. Let me just wait for this car for the fiery trials and tribulations that you're experiencing. You remain sweet. You be exceedingly glad because heaven is on you. The garment of expressive praise is on you. Again, I keep saying, and you're going to see it. It's already written in chapter three, but you're going to see it again in chapter four for the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease in the fourth dimension, where in Isaiah 61, three, the garment of expressive praise is the kingdom of heaven. And the cloak of heaviness is the world. Jesus came to lift the world off of us. Heaviness, the things that are not our identity. And he came to bring heaven to us, that kingdom so that we walk in it. And in that kingdom, there is God's taste. He tastes, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good and he tastes so sweet because of the sweetness of the fragrance of who he is. So I think about, and I've written about it in Mindfulness or Mind of Christ at the G protein coupled receptor, which half of them are the flavors of senses, smell, taste, auditory, and uh, seeing in your body, where you have eyes, ears, smell, taste in your body. And how when we eat, 
that 80% of our taste comes from what we smell. You hold your nose and you try to eat and you're not going to taste it. You keep your nose open and you see that session six of God's Bible School of the Prophets, which eventually will be on Amazon because I've written all of those 36 workbooks and that's workbook number six. Back in 2012, you're going to see the nose and the anatomy of the nose compared in relation to the spirit of the Lord as God unpacks scripture with the anatomy of the nose and how the fear of the Lord keeps you from sin and the dimension of Holy Spirit with the fear of the Lord. So one of the things in relation to us really being able to taste and know that God is good is the fear of the Lord, that dimension of Holy Spirit. And this is what God showed me. Oh my goodness, it's so amazing. So this morning as I'm walking, doing my Facebook Live, someone walks by me and they have this intense fragrance on and I smell it way after they're gone. I'm talking about way after. I smell it wherever they've walked. And I could not help but think of the presence of the Lord in us, that even when we've been around others and we leave their presence, that His presence lingers like a perfume around them. And they sense the Holy Spirit. Well, this is so powerful. Watch this. Hold on one second. Let me wait for this truck. Okay. So watch this because this is absolutely powerful. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you what. When you walk in the fragrance of heaven, others are going to perceive it. And it is going to be known and it, you're going to be so sweet in the heat of your trial. You're going to beat the heat and stay sweet. Woo! And like that sweet heat barbecue sauce, the enemy is going to be sliced and diced. That basilisk, and if you haven't seen my basilisk teachings, which is a combination of Leviathan and divination, from Isaiah 59, watch it. It's on my YouTube channel. You're going to stay sweet because as Isaiah 27, 1, God unsheathes the sword of the Lord, which is different than the sword of the Spirit. When God unsheathes the sword of the Lord, the enemy is done for. The battle is the Lord's. And as you stay sweet, and I found out I got my numbers back as my doctor contacted me yesterday, so I'm not in full-blown menopause, I'm in perimenopause, and I'm thinking, if this is how perimenopause feels, what in the world is menopause gonna feel like? Oh my goodness! But I am getting some hormone replacement therapy. Thank you, God! Thank you, God! And what's interesting is my muscle that hasn't healed in over six months, I found out that estrogen deficiency causes sarcopenia and that estrogen is needed for muscle injury repair. So, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, all these things are going to happen as soon as I get on my hormone replacement therapy. I'm going to get my muscle strength back. Your eyes even change and I've had issues with my eyes lately. My optometrist told me last year that my eyes were going through puberty and I'm like, what? What is that? Oh no, but estrogen affects your eyes. It affects so many things and I'm like, oh my goodness, God, I cannot wait because I'm staying sweet through the heat. And when I get my hormone replacement therapy, oh my goodness, oh, so guess what HRT is? Heaven, oh my goodness, I feel the anointing. I'm so glad I showed up today. I don't know if you think I'm crazy. If you do and y'all are already my friends, y'all are loving it and laughing at it. And you're feeling the anointing too. We are having heaven replacement therapy today. Oh my goodness. Do you hear me, saints of God? Some of y'all need, because you're deficient in your heaven replacement therapy. And y'all been losing your mind. You think you're going crazy. You've been feeling weak. You can't see your hand in front of your face. But let me tell you what. When you get that heaven replacement therapy, woo, hallelujah. Let the weak say I am strong, woo. I'm gonna be doing my biceps next time and it's gonna be plump. Cause I've been going to the gym all year watching Rich work out. Everybody probably thinks, what in the world is Robin showing up at the gym? Because you know, I'm about to start doing my strength training again and get off doing only the Sunny Ray Rider. <laughs> 
I'm going to do my strength training again because I got my heaven replacement therapy. Woohoo! And I'm about to Isaiah 40, 31. I've been waiting. I've been waiting and I've been waiting and I've been waiting. I've been feeling the internal heat of the hot flashes, the heat of all these crazy people driving, trying to run into me. Fears within and fightings without, 2 Corinthians 7, 5. But I've been saying sweet. I've been ha I haven't been hating on them. I haven't been cursing them. I haven't been blasting them out of the water. I've been saying sweet. And I, all of those who have waited on your heaven replacement therapy. <laughs> Are you staying sweet? That's the patience. You got to stay sweet. <laughs> and when you do, woo, those that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up on the wings of eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. Woo! They shall walk and not faint. Because they're going to be like an eagle going to the sun. S-U-N is a S-O-N. Woo! You're about to have your heaven replacement therapy. And when you have your heaven replacement therapy, it affects everyone. It lingers. It touches. It heals. It delivers. Amen. God bless you today as you have your HRT, your heaven replacement therapy. I love you. God loves you more. Amen. God bless.